In the fall of 2021, Adobe announced that a new version of Captivate was coming. Nicknamed Project Charm, the new version promised to be a total rebuild of the popular e-learning authoring software. Finally, after a long wait, the new version is here. So, how charming is it? Stick around to find out. Hey, it's Jeff with YourLearningCareer.com. Now, I've been using Adobe Captivate since version 3 back in 2008, so I was really excited when this new version was announced. The 2019 version was feeling very dated, and I liked what I saw with this new interface. Unfortunately, in my opinion, Adobe really stumbled with the release of this version. If you had a product that was subscription-based and you released a brand spanking new version, who might you think to inform? Probably your subscribers who have been paying you and who are obviously fans of your product. Well, guess what? As an annual subscriber to Adobe Captivate, I heard nothing. You know how I found out it was released? Through YouTube. I just happened to come across Paul Wilson's video where he did an overview of the new features, and I'll link to that in the description below. So was it just me? Let me know in the comments how you found out about the new release. So now that I knew it had finally been released, I of course wanted to go ahead and download it. I thought it would be pretty simple and I could just go into my Adobe account, find it, and download it. I mean, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Apparently not to Adobe, because after a whole bunch of looking around in the wrong places, what I ended up having to do was to download the trial version. Once I did that and I signed in, it recognized me as a subscriber and I was good to go. But why make me jump through all the hoops? At this point, I finally had it installed and I was ready to go in and play. But Adobe still had some unexpected surprises for me. Some of the things I had wanted to test in the new version are different workflows that I use. For example, oftentimes I will begin a storyboard in PowerPoint and then I will bring that into my e-learning authoring software. Or I may have an existing PowerPoint presentation that I want to convert into an e-learning package. So here's the welcome where I would select the type of project I'm starting. And as you can see, I've got two choices. I've got new project and I've got new simulation. So there's not an option for PowerPoint like we have in 2019. Because remember in 2019, I do have this from PowerPoint option. Okay, so I thought, well, maybe I need to open a new project and I'll find it there. So just a reminder, in the old version, if I wanted to import a PowerPoint, I could just go to file and then import and I've got lots of things that I can import, including PowerPoint slides. So again, this is the old version, the 2019. So I thought, okay, maybe it's similar with the new version. So let me try that. So I'll go to file, import. What? I don't even have Photoshop, let alone PowerPoint. All I have here is project content and closed captions. Okay. So. If I want to import PowerPoint, I have to use the old version. Something else I wanted to see was how I might be able to update existing Captivate projects. <laughs> that should be easy, right? For example, you can see in this uh, My Adobe Captivate Projects folder, I have a Zoo Volunteer Orientation project that I built in 2019. So let's see how the new version handles this. I'll just go into File, and then open, and I'll go into that same folder, my Adobe Captivate projects, and what do you know? I can't open an existing Captivate project with the new Captivate. I'm insulted, frankly. So did I miss something? Is this what Adobe's doing across the board with its products? Like, you know, Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere, like I, I can't open a previous version in a new version? I don't think so. Seriously though, when was the last time you bought a software that didn't let you open a file created in the previous version? Bottom line, if you were hoping to get the new version of Captivate in order to replace the old version, too bad. You have to continue to keep both versions in order to have certain functionality. 
Now, I'm pretty sure Paul did mention in his video that there are updates coming, that some of these things are going to be addressed. But of course, who knows when that's going to be? So at this point, you might be wondering, is this whole video just going to be you complaining? It really wasn't my intention to sit here and just bash the new Adobe Captivate. But as a paying subscriber, these are my very real feelings and impressions. But let's go ahead and turn toward more positive things. Let me go back into the software. Now, while I haven't really had a chance to go in and fully explore or build anything, I do have to say, just going in and looking at it, it is a lot cleaner. I really do like this new style for Adobe Captivate. It's definitely a cleaner look and it seems to be a lot more intuitive than the 2019 version. I also like that it comes with some templates built in that you can actually go in and uh, use to get familiar with the interface. There's one uh, that's product onboarding course that actually walks you through a lot of the features and functionality of the new Captivate. And then they also have this nice learn area that has a good amount of tutorials to get you going. Now I am planning to go in and explore it more and actually build something using the new Adobe Captivate. If that's something you'd like to see in a future video, then let me know in the comments. As you can probably tell, I am a bit disappointed overall with the way this new version was rolled out. And at this point, I do feel like it is a bit half-baked. I am optimistic though, that there will be updates and improvements made. So I am looking forward to that. In the meantime, we will need to continue using the 2019 version for certain functionality and project type. And if you want to brush up on that, go ahead and check out my playlist here and in the description.